could your maximum speed, how fast you sprint, actually tell you how good of an endurance athlete you are? There's some evidence out there that suggests that maximum speed could be the best predictive indicator for your endurance. And I've been seeing this float around Instagram. It's always made me scratch my head because as an endurance athlete myself, I find it extremely confusing because when you're an endurance athlete, you're predominantly type one muscle fibers, your training's different, you're building the aerobic base. When you're looking at a sprinter, it's an entirely different metabolic sphere. There's overlap, of course, but I really wanted to break this down because when you look around and you see sprint training as something that's going to make you a better endurance athlete, I don't think it's the best predictive indicator, but it is something that might help. So let's break down how sprinting affects running performance and endurance performance overall. After today's video, I put a link down below for Element Electrolytes. If you're doing any kind of running or any kind of aerobic training, endurance training, sprinting, definitely a good idea to replenish electrolytes. And this link down below gets you a free variety pack with any purchase. So you buy some electrolytes, you get a free variety pack with all the different flavors. So you can give them to a friend, you can use them yourself. Element has zero calories in some flavors and they have no sugar. So that link down below is a special link, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas, that gets you that free variety pack with purchase. So check them out after this video. How could sprint training or maximum speed training be a good indicator of your endurance? Well, the claim is that by training sprinting and by getting better with your nervous system, that essentially you have better neural communication, which would improve what is called your running economy. So in the world of endurance, there's some people that will say, well, my maximum speed is the best indicator of how good my endurance is. Because if my max speed is higher, it means I'm a more efficient runner and it means I'm going to have more endurance. So if you're training for a marathon or a 5K or a 10K, should you just be doing a bunch of sprint training instead of your long distance training? Hmm. The other side is your speed reserve. Your speed reserve is how much you have in the tank. If you train at a fast pace, then your maximum speed is going to be higher, which means your range that you're adapted to is going to be more. And the speed reserve is a very real thing. I'll show a chart later on in this video when we break down speed reserve more that really shows you how it works. So it's a very real thing. But I have questions as to whether that could really be something that determines, let alone be the best indicator of your overall endurance performance. What I'm saying here is we have two ways of looking at this, building base, training the aerobic system, or sprint and aerobic training. And there's always gonna be people that look at both sides or prefer one over the other. But to say that sprint training is gonna make you a better endurance athlete than just endurance work might be far-fetched. The only studies that I could find to support max speed and endurance, there was one that was published in Depona Goro International Medical Journal. And this didn't quite hit it directly, but it's the closest that I could find. It took a look at 27 soccer players, elite soccer players, and it found there was a correlation between VO2 max and agility, speed and agility, and muscle explosiveness and agility. The only thing that I can find here is that maybe the correlation between VO2 max and agility was kind of what was drawing this inference, but agility is not the same as max speed. So just because someone, you can correlate that if someone has better VO2 max, in this particular case, they had better agility, doesn't necessarily mean they had better max speed. But the most important thing to note with this particular study is we can't say that this study means that max speed or even agility is a good indicator because these athletes are already very aerobically trained. If you're taking soccer players, they've already built a strong aerobic base just by the nature of their sport. But when you look at the posts that I've seen floating around on Instagram, the one study that's referenced a lot is actually one from 1990. And it's from my good friend, Dr. Tim Noakes, who I have had on this channel before. And he is a sharp, sharp dude. And there's nothing wrong with this study. But what's happening is people are misinterpreting this data. I'm gonna read the excerpt from it. And you can see how it could be confusing. Maximal speed was a strong determinant of endurance performance. This study showed that peak treadmill velocity was the, quote, best laboratory predictor of running performance at 10 kilometers, 
21.1 kilometers, 42.2 kilometers, and 90 kilometer distance in ultra runners. That sounds pretty point blank, that their peak running velocity was actually a better indicator, it was the best indicator. But this study leaves some serious gaps. First and foremost, peak treadmill velocity is likely not maximum speed. It sounds like this was a VO2 max test and they were measuring the peak treadmill velocity at VO2 max, right? So like when you're training VO2 max, you're not going to max speed. You're training to this point at which you have maximum oxygen volume, right? So the amount you can, before you start to diminish and the curve changes. So this is not your maximum speed. So to call it the best indicator is a little bit premature, but there was a study published in Trends in Sports Sciences in 2020. It was really, really interesting and it helps us understand some of this more. This study's aim was to find factors that would be better predictors than just VO2 max. Because VO2 max can be interesting. If I have a VO2 max of let's say 56, and you have a VO2 max of 50, does it mean that I'm a better runner than you? Not necessarily, because a lot of things come into play. What if your running efficiency was better than mine? So it took less effort for you to run fast at a 50 VO2 max than me at a 55 or 56 VO2 max, right? So there's a lot of factors. Your wattage at VO2 max actually matters too. So we needed to find some things that were different than just VO2 max to say, you're a good runner, you're a good athlete, this and that. So they found, said running economy was a really important one, obviously, how efficient you run. Your velocity at VO2 max, like what is your overall power and velocity when you're at VO2 max? Am I creating more power at my VO2 max? Or at ye, are you at a lower VO2 max actually creating more power than I am even at a higher VO2 max? Your time limit at VO2 max, how long can you sustain that? How long can you actually, your ability to buffer hydrogen ions and actually like clear lactate could matter. You're running velocity at lactate threshold when you're at the tippy tip, tip max. Like what, how much power are you generating? And finally, max speed. So max speed was one of many potentially better predictors than VO2 max. They were looking at all of these, but it doesn't mean that max speed was the first and foremost. As a matter of fact, it was at the bottom of the list, whereas the overall running efficiency, running economy, was actually the best indicator in this particular case. Next up is the neural activation piece. The claim that if you are able to become more neurologically adapted and be able to send signals to the muscle better, you will be a better, more efficient runner than someone that just has a stronger aerobic base. I find that hard to believe. Once again, in tandem, yes, any good running training has speed work put into it. And that is for this reason, to improve your running economy and to help neurologically. But then there was a study published in 2001 in sports medicine that found that like the overall like nerve conduction speed, how fast you could transmit a signal, that did improve with sprinting. But improving the nerve conductive speed didn't seem to improve anything else. So it was like a result of the sprinting, but it didn't seem to translate into max speed. So it doesn't seem like max speed really matters for your endurance work, other than making your endurance work a little easier. So again, why wouldn't you be training both, right? You should be training your endurance work to build the base and then train the speed work to become more efficient so that your base is easier. If I run a base mile, at eight minutes, but I get more efficient and I can run that same base mile at seven and a half minutes because I've done sprint work and I'm more efficient, that's hugely beneficial, but it does not mean that my sprint work and my times on the track are the best predictive indicator of how I will perform on my marathon. And lastly, the speed reserve piece. Again, coming back to what I said earlier, if speed reserve really mattered that much for endurance work, then Usain Bolt would be the fastest and best endurance athlete that's out there. The speed reserve matters for sure. You should do speed training. That's why you do things like fart like training or you do three minute intervals and one minute intervals and five minute intervals. So you train across these ranges for efficiency and for that speed reserve. But as your distance increases, your aerobic variables matter more than your speed variables. So the speed variables are going to be a smaller drop in the bucket than the aerobic variables. The biggest levers that you can pull as a long distance or an endurance athlete would be to improve the aerobic system. The smaller yet still important levers are going to be the speed work. 
Now, if you are someone that is training speed work for body composition, for fat loss, that is a different discussion altogether. We're talking about for overall building base and what is the best predictive indicator. So what is the answer here? If I had to give you my honest answer, it would be about 80% aerobic work, 20% speed work. And in that 20% speed work, about 20% of that is max speed work. Why? Because your max speed work increases your risk of injury. But training that anaerobic system is good to give you a little bit of extra cushion for when you come race day or come pedal to the metal, you have a little bit more to dip into. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.